party wagon and hold on to your pizza. And we are live, Epic Tales from the Sewers, with your host, Justin, and my excellent co-host, Eric. We have a very special guest with us tonight, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a camera, but um, it's okay, because I'm still going to show you what it's all about. Uh, we have Scott with us from Stand It Up Comics, and uh, if you're if you're unfamiliar with this, you have to look it up. I bought one, and I'm just going to show the folks on it, uh, So, and this is mostly an audio podcast, just in case, but we are trying a live stream tonight, so if you can see it. So what we have here is one of the items, the Stand It Up, you know, it's uh, this just happens to be the last Ronin. It's a 3D printed last Ronin where it has the cover of the first issue and then it has the logo in front and an area for you to actually put your uh, graded books in here, your CGC graded books. So uh, I, we're going to talk to Scott a little bit and just uh, kind of uh, find out a little bit about how this came about and just what he offers and all that and just kind of get everybody out there to take a look at these. But um, if, you're, if you're just watching, this is what we're talking about tonight, the uh, Stand It Up Comics. So now I'll hold it here for a little bit so folks can see it. All right. How's it going, Scott? Uh, we're doing great tonight. I'm doing great tonight. It's good to be on the show, guys. Yeah, we're glad to have you. Uh, like I said, I, I've been raving about this thing. You can ask Eric, you know, for since I bought it. And, and I got it just uh, prior to Christmas because uh, the uh, the other one I was talking about, the Funko Pop, which is uh, has uh, Hamilton on it. That's uh, on display upstairs in the wife's desk. So um, I, I love these things. They're so cool. How did you go about having this idea? Um, well, I've always had the 3D printing for a while, for several years, we've been into that, but, um, I sold all my stuff locally at the comic book store, you know, any comic book related prints I do, I just bring down there and maybe someone would buy it, maybe they wouldn't, whatever, I'd have some fun. And he told me one day, he said, hey, maybe comic book stands, and I was like, yeah. cool, that sounds awesome, we should totally do that. So I made a couple. That's really cool. <laughs> it's a, it's a really innovative design too, because this is actually removable. Right. Mm -hmm. So in the back is this when you put the actual comic on. So I happen to have my last Ronin graded 9.8 right here. It actually sits oh, right think. in there. And Ooh. again, sorry for the audio, folks. Uh, you can't see this, but I put it right in there. There's a little uh, channel and the uh, the item that's 3D printed to look like the last Ronin cover holds up the book. So it's it's just such an awesome display. And the cool thing too, guys, and, and I know I sound like a salesman now, but I'm just, I, I want to kind of just go through this. There's, there's little things on the back for screws. Mm -hmm. So it, it hangs like a wall sconce, like a, a, something that you could just put up on the wall, which is like, I thought this was just so innovative. It could be a little mini shelf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and it's, uh, it's sturdy. It's well-made. It's, it's nice and thick. So it's not like some of the things that you see that are 3d printed where it's like oh this thing needs to be polished and all that this is like a, a professional grade sort of uh, print so you, you're doing a really good job yeah thanks it's uh, it takes a it takes a lot to print them that well you know i see a lot of prints in the 3d world and they're they're not that great but uh i try to get them the best i can oh really 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 good and i stop i'm not even looking at face to face like justin is but from what i'm seeing it looks really 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 good though yeah, Thank it, you. that's that's why I was so excited about it because it just seems. Did you, uh, did you figure out what the other two holes were for? Uh, other two holes. Okay, so no. Uh, well, what is this? You've got some here. Is that for? Uh, or, I don't know. What are they? It does say stand it up on the back though. That's pretty cool. Thanks, thanks. It's uh, it's for lights. You can put lights in through those holes and they oh, go underneath oh, that. That's, that's ingenious. Cool. I didn't even know. And that. then you got a little LED thing you could press. You could plug it into your laptop, wherever you got it. You know, I usually do battery powered ones. Why not? Yeah, that's. But that's that little great. plastic insert comes out, and you can run lights in there somehow. Yep, and underneath you know? here, the plastic insert that you're talking about is is uh, like somewhat clear, right? Yeah, so you can. It looks kind of like mm. um, like the like your car, like that sort of uh, stuff. So yeah, it's like I don't have the best lighting. Clear diffuser. Yeah, and I mean, like. If you're a Turtles fan, right, and you have something like this with the the last Ronin on it, and and I mean, you've got like three or four different Ninja Turtles ones that I saw. I mean, that's oh, I've got a few more coming out in the next couple of days too with all the new logos. Oh, you're are you doing uh -oh. a Lost Years one? Um, no, but was was it you that asked for Ben today? Ben, no. is it Ben David or who's ben the Bishop? who's the writer? Uh, ben Bishop, the artist. Ben Bishop, there you go, Ben Bishop. Someone asked for Ben Bishop today. As a request, um, that'd be pretty fun. But we took Kevin Eastman and did a nice little 
signature version, but then added his wow, his remark. You know that little turtle he does on everything. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. To the front, so you have a little sign, Kevin Eastman, with a little turtle on it. It was a special request for a customer, so wow, we really like that one. So, so you you pull that off online right like his little remark and then you're able to render well it was actually movie. right off of the book that oh, wow. uh the lady sent me she said hey this is my husband's book this is how it's signed can you do this signature on it and you know we just took that exact signature from the exact book and pulled it right off eric eric wants to do the peter laird signature next to the kevin eastman signatures that's what he right. wants so right on the ninja turtles with both of them on the side that's what he wants so yeah see, uh, I got, pretty cool too like a double signed slab stand yeah. i like it yeah, yeah yeah i got i actually have uh it's actually up in my son's room which it's a uh, graded i want to say it's like eight or 8.5 cbcs cbcs right. one but yeah that that'd be uh that'd be freaking awesome Justin. We just don't know how the artists are going to feel about it sometimes. Like, yeah. I have a few of them that are pretty happy about it. Yeah. Ivan Tao is a great guy. He loves it. Uh, you know, Clayton Crane absolutely hated it. Uh, yeah, okay. That's uh... – <laughs> Hey, what's up? Uh, thanks for for tuning in. I um, I can't see who it is. It says Facebook user, but uh, yeah. thanks for for checking us out. You know, we're we're talking to Scott from Stand It Up Comics. This is the stand we're talking about, right? So, I mean, all the extra features on this thing, you know. And uh, I said it's this piece looks like Rich the cover. Davis. Oh, Rich Davis. Okay, cool. From the Dorkening. Yep. He's yeah, the we Velvet, need to... Velvet Joker from uh from the uh, the Splash Pages show. Oh, excellent. Yeah, we need to, uh, if you can, try to make this shareable so that way I can post it in the other turtle groups. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I didn't add them because I didn't have uh, permission to do so. So, but uh, if you do, that's that's great. So, but um, I, I saw some other ones that were really cool. And it looks like you, you have your finger on the pulse of these comics that are coming out because I, I was I was kind of surprised how deep you went. Because I was looking, I'm like, all right, someone is killing the children. That's awesome that that's even a thing. Then I saw you had Zombie Tramp, and I'm like, what? You know, that's that's pretty cool that it's like you go that deep with what you do. Are, are these oh, yeah, all, like, always a customer request, 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 you know? Customer They're all request, somebody that right? wants it. I don't just jump right in there unless it's something I really love. Mm-hmm. Then I'll make it. You know, I love Captain America. I'm going to make some 3D shields, Thor, stuff like that. But I didn't know about some is kill the children, even though it's one of my top sellers. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, people that buy that book or buy it for those covers. They want to display it. It's like what they do and what they love about that book is the gazillion cover. So that one actually works out great. Zombie yeah, Tramp I... was just somebody was like, hey, I want a zombie tramp stamp and I wanted this color. And I want this <laughs> color. And I was like, all right. I think that I've was, only sold one, cool. but people love it. Like I get a lot of likes on it. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Uh, they were saying Clayton Crane is a guy that lost half his his fans in the last six months. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he did. He did definitely. You know, and it's sad because I love Clayton Crane. Yeah, it's, and I met him in person. And he loved it too. So it, the stands are just more of just drama that he doesn't care about. Yeah, it's it kind of stinks that it comes to that, and and when things do come down to things like money and licensing and all that. But I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I just think it's cool because I, I saw you had one that was just Nightcrawler. And it's just like Nightcrawler sitting there. And I'm like, that is amazing. You know, just yeah. to, to see him like that and, and not even to just put like a graded book on that. I wouldn't even want to cover the thing. It looks so good. Oh, we sold the wall art online to some guy in Canada. Oh, you know, awesome. yeah, he was, you know, I guess a Nightcrawler fan. And now we've been trying to open it up all of our backboards, kind of like how I display mine on the wall with like what would be the backboard next to it, you know, like kind of have this 3d piece of art that doesn't uh, get deteriorated by the sunlight and stuff, you know, or get ripped up by your children or yeah. Yeah. You know, easy to hang. You can use hang with blue tape or something. Just kind of stick it to the wall. That's what I do. That's, that's pretty cool. And, and I mean, um, let, let's talk more. So you're, you're a Marvel guy. It sounds like, right. You're like Captain America, Thor, that kind of thing. Um, who actually more of a DC it? guy. Oh, yeah, okay. I then... love Superman. I like Batman. I like the dark stuff. Oh, cool. I like yeah. the villain. Joker is my favorite. God loves some villain. You're that Hornet. velvet Joker. Joker's mm-hmm. his favorite. 
That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big Sinestro guy myself. Like, I, I love Sinestro, Bane, you know. Um, I, I, Modoc. Oh. <laughs> Modoc's pretty cool. And, and I mean, he's he's coming around in this next uh, version of Ant Man 3 Quadro. Uh, was it? Yeah, it's got a comeback coming. Like yeah, I think it's going to be cool. Uh, and, and from what we've seen of him, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be like a battle armor or something and not his actual face, but. No. <laughs> It's it's weird too that you said Modoc's one of the ones that you like. Um, did you, have you made a Modoc stand yet? No, but um, I did make a giant Modoc model where it printed in like uh, you know twenty pieces and kind of came together. And we you know we were painting it. I don't think we ever finished it, but it's a huge Modoc. It's really fun, really cool looking. I like how he kind of looks like Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, kind of <laughs> like. Kind of like this guy. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's so cool too because it's like I, I could just think of like near infinite possibilities for anything that you could do. And uh it's kind of a neat venue to be in. You know, and, and if it's you could custom, Yeah, and if you could just custom make them, you know, it's like literally so you could make like say our logo into something or anything else like that, right? That's that's something that you could do or um, yeah, definitely. But uh, something else we did was, uh, you have you seen the Gator Guards? Those cool little cases that people can, you know, self-gray their acrylic or whatever. You kind of put your comics in there and it's like CGCing them yourself. Hey, uh, the, the self-pressing ones. Uh, have you seen those? Well, there? they're just bolt together acrylic cases, you know. Oh, um, yes. Okay. I, I know what you're talking about because I, I used to have those for like sports cards and things where you just put the little screws and. Yeah, and they work great, especially for some of like your signed books and stuff like that. So for him, he was a friend. He's also in Tennessee. So I got sick of screwing his stuff with my fingers. So I made him a little screwdriver that said Gator Guards on it. And I made him oh wow, I'm like a thousand of them now. And he loves them. His customers love them. He sends them out with all of his boxes. Oh, that's so cool. So it's just something I could do to help out with the community. You know, like as a, you know, he's a friend, but he's also part of the comic community. So we put his logo on anything, put him a screwdriver to help, you know, his customers. That's, that's some really good uh, sort of cross marketing too. So, and, and just for a thing to add in, that's like, like you were talking about Ben Bishop earlier, he does this uh, group called the Bish kids club and they send out like a box every quarter. So I, he usually does stuff like that where he'll like throw in something, you know, and it's like branded to the Bish kids and all that. So, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. Yeah, I haven't really seen his signature or anything, so I don't know how the Ben Bishop's gonna go. But someone was like, "If you make it, I will buy it." And I was like, "All right, well, all right, I'll get, I'll get around to that one." All right, added to the turtle collection. Yeah, there's some passionate fans uh, of which Eric and I are are two of them, but really passionate fans uh, of Ben Bishop. So we're really excited by the uh, Lost Years coming out. And I mean, just the other stuff, it's like, I, I think that he had like the best cover of the last Ronin itself. So, and that maybe, maybe that's even the one that they were talking about. If it's the one where, um, where he's kind of on his knees. Yeah, With the ghost sure. above him. Yeah. Mm. Uh, oh no, that's. No. Not... Oh, okay. Which no, one you're we talking about Aaron Bartling. Yeah. That's that the seems Bartling like the Bartling 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 I love that yeah. cover. <laughs> oh, it's an expensive cover too. Before the screwdriver is included. Well, you should you should email him and see if he's got a screwdriver for you. you know? Oh yeah, well he definitely does. I just sent him a bunch. Oh okay, well there you just go. Go buy more cases. Yeah, buy more. <laughs> you know, or if you buy a stand for me, I'll send you a bunch of them. Yeah, he said he bought fifteen all at once from him. Oh wow, that's oh awesome. is this the turtle? Is this my turtle guy? Must be Matthew Wild Wilder. I'm not sure. We don't we don't talk about names, all right? It's you know <laughs> strictly <laughs> confidential. My Etsy okay. account is clearly confidential, all right. Copy that. That's but I do have a, a few people that buy so many stands, and uh, there is a definitely a turtle guy who uh, loves the turtles, and we've just been buying turtle stands for his wall. We love them. Okay, I kind of cool. I kind of love turtles. I mean, yeah, you like turtles. They're one of my favorite things growing up is uh, the turtles too. So if I'm gonna get hooked on any book or series, or it's gonna be the turtles. So that that certainly yeah. explains why there's a whole bevy of ones that you're offering. You know, from that. Hey, Jar Jar, Jeremy, Jeremy Courtney's on. Um, Jeremy, you're gonna love this. Mm -hmm. We are talking with Scott tonight, and Scott is the proprietor of Standard of Comics, who is making these graded stands. Right. 
So they have yeah, 3D printed backs. Those look backs freaking awesome, movable, though. Right? And um, it's got the logo on front. There's a little channel in here that you put your graded book into. And on the back, a couple things that uh, he had just uh, told us about. There's little holes that you can actually put uh, little lights into and uh, spots for a shelf so you can hang it up on the wall. I, I love it. And, um, you know, just to kind of tell people what we were even talking about. So um, let, let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, you, Scott. Uh, you, you mentioned that you like turtles. Obvious question. Um, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite turtle? Donatello. Hands down. You're a Donnie guy. Okay, cool. Wow. It's, it's the brain thing. You know, we were just gadgets. We were always in the computers. And I figure if I'm going to save anyone, it's going to be like unlocking the door before like everyone got. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, actually, that goes back to uh, issue two of the Mirage series. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Eric, did you notice that a lot of our guests, like the majority of probably the guests that we've had on are Donnie fans? It's kind of shocking. Yeah, it's it's weird because I'm a Leonardo guy. He's a Raph guy, you know, and um, most people I think are Michelangelo because he's like the funny one. Mike it's, it or seems Raphael. that way, but it's it's funny because like a lot of the people that we've talked to, and we we've talked to like some some big name people, they're like, "Oh, I like Donnie." Like, huh? No kidding. So he's he's got some passionate fans, man. You love hearing yeah. he loves Mikey. I mean, he, everyone's got like he. You think he'd be the fan favorite? Yeah, you would think. And and after the last Ronin and everything, you know, um, I wonder how that's affected his popularity. So yeah, so, or so the Scott people just don't know who that person might be. You know, yeah. like if you haven't really read it, you don't know it's you know Mikey that's still alive. Yeah, yeah, and and to me that boggles my mind on why someone would not have read it, but <laughs> you know, well, yeah, that's the whole thing people don't have the time. All right, they love it, they love the art, they hear the stories, but they don't know it's Mikey. Yeah, yeah. Matthew Wilder, shame on you. <laughs> I don't like turtles. Or no. Boy, this is interesting tonight, isn't it, with these comments? So, Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, it adds a, another layer of richness to the show. So, it's, uh... Well, there's that one famous uh, episode <laughs> on TV where he's like, I like turtles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the little kid that was dressed up like a zombie or something with that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that guy. The Tosh yeah. show, Tosh.0. Oh, oh, Tosh, I, yeah. I absolutely don't like turtles. I mean, yeah, no. just paint it like a turtle show in here and it's it. Yep, you've got you've got uh, <laughs> plenty of space though to put up one of these uh, one of these stand it ups though. So that would be yes. I actually do have a little bit of wall space. <laughs> We're trying to work on putting them on the ceilings next, guys. We have these Funko guys that put them all over the walls. I feel like I could put them on the ceilings for them. Well, that's that's my next step is probably putting that's, stuff on uh, the ceiling. Pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Funko's on the ceiling. So so what's the next product? Because you've got you've got one that's that's for either a standing Funko or you can put the box on it. So we have one that's that's unopened in the box and it sits on it absolutely perfectly. What um what other kind of things are you gonna try to make a stand for? Uh well we're gonna venture more into like other models of the Funko stands. Like we have the sports models coming out where you got like the little basketball backgrounds. You know, football backgrounds, you know, kind of have like a football field floor, you know, something that, like really cool to put your Funko on. Yeah, they're, they're doing some stuff with that. Like I saw that they had a Venom with like the cover of, of Lethal Protector and like Snow White or uh, Luke Skywalker. With, and they would have behind it like the whole big uh, and they're actually like bigger than normal, like the backgrounds. And the plastic, like, like really hard cases. They are. They are in, in that. They're not designed to be open, I don't think. I don't know. I haven't tried. Yeah, I, I I didn't get any of them yet, but I, I saw I saw an Alice Cooper one that was pretty neat. So <laughs> yeah, so we're just trying to capture three D scenes, possibly do some stuff with like some Star Wars backgrounds or oh, you know that would, to... that would be perfect to put on it. Your nine point nine. I know. Could could you do like a background scene like this one? Yeah, that's definitely something that we're we're working towards. Are you trying to get it on a Funko or are you trying to get on a on a comic stand. Comic stand. On a comic stand, yeah, that's definitely we could. Definitely send me, you know, the yeah. pictures via my I mean I could my I could talk to I could talk to the artist. I could talk to the artist and see if he'd be okay with it, which I'm pretty sure pretty sure he would be okay with it if it was just a one and one one and done, you know. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, most of the time they the artists don't care. I mean, <clears> when it comes to the art, you're not selling digital prints. Well, I mean, and he's been on the, he's been on our really show twice. So, 
But uh, we do things for so many artists, like uh, Batman. Uh, what's his name? George Molina. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, that's all approved from you know from somebody. He was like, "This is what I want on it. Let's do that." So I kind of made that one for him, for a uh, con event. You know, for one of my my customers who buys stands for all of his customers, that's which great. is George Molina. So. Every it's show so cool. he tries to get a stand for everybody. You know, he gives me a list. He's like, I got ten people signing. Could wow. you make as many stands as you can? How how long does the process take you from cradle to grave to start like a brand new design and take mm -hmm. it? Um, it could only take an hour. Seriously? You know? Oh, well, I mean, I could wow. put last Ronin on the front, you know, in five minutes. Have it ready to go and on the printer done in two hours. Oh, um, but the backboards get really intricate. You know, those mm -hmm. those are a lot of SVG work and it's a lot of layers and it crashes a lot. So, I mean, that was the backboards are tough. And then, do you have a process for like curing them or like do you put like any like varnish or something like that after they're done? We tried it, but it actually ended up not working as well when we started clearing them or coating them. Like it made, you know, it just seemed like most it didn't turn out as well as we thought it would. Most people didn't really have a better or negative way to impact it. So, and it's ruined a couple things in shipments or in heat, you know. Yeah, we prefer not to. We like to just keep it clean and just regular plastic. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it needs it, but I was I was curious, like just feed, uh, feeling it and all that. So because it, yeah, it's... clear coating is not a bad idea. If you're if you want it to really shine and you know pop out, clear coat it. Well, with with mine, it's it's probably always going to have a book on on top of it. So you know, it's uh, they're probably not going to see much of this. So, but uh, is, is is this um. Is this like replaceable? Like, could you get like just a flat one to put it in the back so you could display this? Um, what do you mean, just the flat one? So, so there's this art, right? The 3D printed art that's holding the book. Could you essentially get just one of these that's maybe just like a big rectangle and then display this piece on the front or the back or just like I mean, on just the like wall? On, just on the wall, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. We can definitely just print just that guy, and you can stick him to your wall. Oh, cool, nice. Yeah, on most of our backboards, we sell on our Etsy separately, or we're trying to at least split the file if it's splittable. So we can sell just the artwork for people that just want, you know, to have some cool 3D art for the kids. They can't break it. It doesn't rip off. Yeah, yeah. It makes a lot of sense for kids, I was just thinking. Do, do you have, like, a popular one for kids? Just Spider-Man, I think, is our top seller. It's always Spider-Man. It's the only one we really? sell a lot of. Hulk. I think Hulk looks cool on the wall, um, but it's always a fan favorite. It's so hard to pick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, we're in a turtle group right now, but man, everybody loves you know their own superheroes. Well, it's like you said, you love the Joker. You know, it's that would be just a cool thing to have have the Joker and you know all the ha has and stuff all around it, and like how that kind of works. So I, I can see any of these just being really cool. I can see Krang looking cool. You know, just the android body sitting up there with his, you know, his brain in the gut. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, and that's what we're kind of going with. We're trying to do more 3D stands. Like, we have uh, Malmure. Is that how you say it? Malmure? Oh, the the hammer. Yeah. Uh, Thor, Thor's hammer? Yeah, we, uh, we have that, which is a pretty common 3D printed file. People can make it on their own all the time. But my uh, designer has a really cool one that he chopped up. And we have that ready to print and sell as a slab stand you know you got the little half hammer version you know you just pop your comic in doesn't need a backboard just like that and that's kind of fun it's all 3d um the new star wars little stand sells pretty good with the death star you just kind of put your comic on top of so I'm, I'm thinking about this is it set up where the base is the actual hammer and then the handle is is the uh the stand is that how it's set up um, it's just slotted on the top of the, the bottom of the hammer. So the handle would be the backboard. Oh, that's yeah. See, that's really cool. So that way it looks like, you know, you set down the hammer and you've got your comic sitting on that. Yeah. Like, is your comic worthy? I don't know. Oh, here's, <laughs> here's an interesting one. Uh, you should try, uh, Marvel famous battles, Wolverine versus Sabretooth or Spidey versus Venom. That'd be interesting. Yeah, man. That's, 
that sounds like a great idea, you know, and maybe have one on each side of the front or something like that. That would be cool. You know, going yeah, like- definitely. Definitely. I like that. And it's something I've been trying to work more on is doing more stuff on the front that kind of creeps up along the sides of the comics. We're just having really bigger, big front plates there that kind of wrap and encompass the books a little more. Yeah, nice. That was a good. Su- that was a good suggestion. Whoever that was, I can't see your name. Matt. Oh, Matt. That that, was a good uh, man, Matt, Matt, Matt. And we do special requests all the time. You know, if that's something that you want, you know, let's let's talk about it. Let's try to get one made. It sounds fun. How does that affect the uh, price point when you have a special request? Because generally speaking, these these are at or close to around um, was it around like forty nine to sixty bucks, depending on on what it was. I think it was. Yeah, was the last round is a little different because it's uh, you know it's oversized so everyone has to have you know i I print them a little heavier you know it's got to be ready for those bigger books and stuff but every but they're all priced the same if it's something i'm going to sell on etsy it's a book that i'm going to sell again and it's like a custom request like hey i want poison ivy i want dr doom i want this those are all going to go on my etsy i'm not going to charge you extra for those because i'm going to make my money in the in the end that's you know, great. Someone else is going to eventually buy a Doctor Doom. Maybe not this year. Maybe next year. But someone's going to buy a Doctor Doom again. Yeah, I think you got like endless. I mean, it's it it can keep going on and on. You got like so many ideas that you could do. The endless ideas to do for these things. I mean, yeah, yeah we're just trying to get focused on book, the big ones you know? right now and trying to make them more three D. That's going to be going to be the more fun way to you know, be on top. Do you mm-hmm. have anything for say like record albums or anything else like that? Cause I, I was thinking how cool it would be to have like Iron Maiden or Metallica or something like that. And then have like the record and you could set it down on something like this. Cause this mm-hmm. magazine size would definitely hold one of my records. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And I sell that same model as a record stand with oh, a record perfect. backboard um, and customizable however you want. So I've sold a few as record stands. But there's so many stands for records on the internet. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Where comic books, you know, there's only a few guys that make comic book stands and there's a few guys that make them 3D printed and some people make out of acrylic and then you got the wood block guys. Yeah. So, you know, but for some reason, record stands, I mean, those are whew, cheap. They're everywhere. There's a gazillion of them. I can do it with the logos. That's where I, I excel, you know. But it comes as requested. I've only had a few requests. How intricate do the uh, the front plates get? Because this one obviously just has the logo and all that. Could you put multiple logos on that? Um, yes and no. And I have this new crazy printer that's supposed to do even crazier stuff. And Uh-oh. I have the option of gluing stuff onto the front by printing multiple logos and like layering of them. But uh, it just depends on what you want, you know? Yeah, because I was just thinking, like, you know, if maybe you're a fan of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, you want, like, all three of them on there and, like, their little icons or something. Maybe there's that. Or or maybe you want, like, the last Ronin in the Lost Years or, you know, I don't know. Everything's turtle-centric over here. But Yeah. Um, well, we also make them interchangeable in a way. Like, I usually glue them in place because mm-hmm. most people don't really need to interchange them. But they can slide up and out and you can have multiple front plates and you can swap them off for photo shoots or for, you know, changing them out on the wall. You don't always want that book there, but you're mounting it on the wall and it's going to be mounted there forever. So having front plates that pop off um, makes it really easy for people just to interchange all the time. Like I would at my house. What do you, uh, what do you keep at your house? What do you like to display of, of your work for these? Uh, mine is my office, and it's pretty much just uh, a goulash of whatever I'm creating. So if I have a slab that fits it, I put it on the wall. But other than that, I don't have like a, a dedicated area for what I love because it's all just creations that I'm making, and I need so much space. I don't have a space for my own stuff, I guess. Yeah. And then my wife has the rest of the house, so she can't really, you know, I can't. I only get so space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if only you could three D print another room, right? <laughs> they can. You can. People are doing it. You're printing houses now. They're three D printing mm-hmm. boats. Um, it's a process, you food. know. It's three uh, D printing it's like food. Cool, 
they are 3D printing food, chocolate. Yep. Um, it's endless. Oh. It's kind of a process of the way the machine works and how it just kind of splooges stuff out in layers. Yeah, it's I love, simple. I, it works for everything. I, I like it. I think it's cool. Um, are, are you able to work with like different colors or is it um, like uh, for for the base? Like, could you make like like something in like an oozy green or something? Or does it have to be a specific black or gray based on like the integrity to hold the weight? Uh, no, it's any color you want, pretty much. And everyone has their own requests. And some people want green ones and some people want yellow ones. Um, the shiny ones are, you know, the ones I stay away from. They're kind of brittle. They don't print as well. So I don't really recommend like the bright, shiny gold ones. <laughs> or so, uh, yeah. I don't, want, okay. I don't want you to have a problem later. And this one will. Yeah, especially if you're going to put this up on your wall and, and it's going to be like a weight bearing, something like that. If you're going to have brittle plastic, you may not want to have something like that. And, and uh, yeah, I could understand. Well, you can that. have it on the logo and that's OK. It's not a big deal. That, that That's not going to affect it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the strangest thing that you've done? Like uh, the strangest request or maybe like the most obscure where you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe someone wants that. We did print like a bunch of dicks. OK. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. That, I mean, that is also strange, and that answers the question to the T. So, absolutely. Yeah, and so. I was quick on that one too. I uh, yeah, it didn't take long to come up with that answer. <laughs> Another idea for all the people selling online: create one, create one uh, bin that in another day auction, doing an auction maybe. Oh, selling books online. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I I absolutely get that. So. Um, and, and that's what I was thinking of. If anybody, you know, uh, it, are there content creators or anything like that, you know, who are listening or watching, this is exactly the type of thing that you'd want to feature in your video. So you can put it right in the forefront so folks can see exactly the book that you're reviewing. So if you're talking about the newest issue of Batman, you're like, oh, yeah, this is what happened with Failsafe and all that. It's like, OK, cool. You know, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and that's that's one of the things that that jumped out at me. Was that? Did we just lose him? Oh, there you are. Hey, hey what's there. up, guys? There we go. Hey, you brushed your hair. There you. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the dark. All right, it's just uh, my wife's in the house. And I'm out in my, you know, my shed. So that's why I killed the lights. But your he shed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not that warm out here. So, <laughs> but I can be loud. I'm a loud person, and the baby's sleeping, and my wife's sleeping. So. Or she will well, be. Well, that's cool. We're we're glad you could uh, you could pop on on camera so so mm -hmm. folks can see your face and you know uh, now they'll associate you with Stand It Up Comics. So <laughs> that's right. Pretty cool. You know, um, and we're getting some decent uh, uh, feedback here from the listeners and viewers. So that's pretty cool. What did he just? Yeah, say? that's where you lost me. I was trying to get into like figure out if I could find the like, group chat or what people were saying, but I was like, where, I was out. Are you on other shows? <laughs> are you are you on Facebook? Who? You, yeah, we're on Facebook. I'm on, are Facebook. You, Everyone's on Facebook. Are you are you in our group, Epic Shows? That's the biggest question. We'll have to we'll have to send an invite. So. So, okay, yeah. once you get in there, that that way you'd be able to see the chat and all that because I I posted in three different groups the uh, last round in the IDW oh, cool. one and all that stuff. So oh, fantastic. Okay, so that that makes sense because it only lets me do ones that I have access to. Which well, is it popped up saying that I could share it, so. I was like, all right, I'm going to share. Hey, you. why not? You know, it's the more people that get to see it, the merrier. And I mean, like I said, in terms of like the last Ronin group, it's like literally showing the last Ronin one. So, yes. you know, and it did not even occur to me because I, I just wasn't thinking properly that this would be magazine sized as opposed to a smaller one. And I'm like, yeah, of course, because most books are not the huge magazine prestige format. Mm -hmm. Duh, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I've had to, uh, that was one stand that created a lot of problems because I didn't have any last Ronin slabs and I tried to go off the measurements, but you know, you need a little bit more. You need to be able to test fit it. My LCS doesn't have any last Ronin. So, mm -hmm. uh, I sent a few out to a guy, you know, and eventually it worked. All right. He didn't, he had no problem. He ordered one. Was like, "Hey, just make it work." I made it work, you know. But uh, it was a little bit of a headache. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I, I just think it's the coolest damn thing ever, you know. And and when it comes to other stuff, I mean, I, I was just thinking, I'm like, man, I should I should get one for Dark Claw 
you know, the, the Wolverine and uh, Batman mixture from Amalgam Comics. That would be fun. You know? Oh, yeah. I don't even know who that is. You know, people yeah, tell yeah, me so like, all the time. I was like, who is this? I got to Google this real quick. Oh, yeah. I don't want to sound like an idiot. Yeah, Dark Hawk. Uh, yeah. Well, Dark Claw. Dark, Dark Hawk. I know. <laughs> I, I, I imagine Hawk there's someone who likes thing. Dark Hawk, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about that. You know, Eric, if, if you have to pick a character to have on this, who are you going to pick? I'm w- I'm going to give you so. Uh, how about Kirby the Fifth Turtle? I, you know, I'm going to throw yeah. that out there a lot. Okay. There's there's some decent pictures online. So you AKA grab that Slash. And... He turned out to be Slash. I don't know yeah. if you. Not not too many people know about Kirby the the Fifth Turtle, but yeah. Well, when, Even when I'm we... like, God, Kirby. <laughs> yeah, when, when we had Kevin Eastman on the show, I asked him specifically about that, and he said that Kirby was originally supposed to be for uh, what they were going to do for the third movie, and they were going to have a fifth turtle, and it was going to be kind of like a, a lost character where it's like, oh, now he's going to be the one to kind of come back, and it's like you can imagine how that would go. But it just it didn't work out, and the idea for the movie fell through, and they ended up with what they ended up with. So... You know, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, now speaking of movies, Last Ronin. Oh, that's going to be a heartbreaking, you know, series, movie, Netflix. Oh, man, I'm I'm so waiting for that one. That yes. would be cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be actually excellent to see if we could get something, and you know, hopefully it'll be uh, they'll, they'll do some justice to it, like our our friend Magnus that did the mm-hmm. CGI version. You know, I want to see the death of Casey. I ain't gonna lie. You know, he's gonna go uh, out with a bag. Yeah, that would <laughs> literally. <Raphael. laughs> Yeah, I probably went out with a bang too. Yeah, well, Ben Bishop decided to post something today about the four new turtles in the Lost Years. Yep. And of course, you know, he's kind of like rubbing that in our face. He kills four, brings four new ones in. So, I'm just saying he's a murderer. <laughs> he's a murderer. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we say to him that that he he killed Raph and he killed the other turtles and all that. So I have yeah. a love hate relationship with Ben. Because <laughs> you you love him, but it turns out that you hate that he killed the turtles. Yeah, he's, someone he's had to do it, murderer. man. He's May an well absolute murderer. <laughs> the same. Not everyone knew what Anakin Skywalker was going to do. All right, but yeah, that's true. That is definitely true. And that Order sixty six and all that, and I still <laughs> think that's like one of the biggest character assassinations that's ever happened. You're like, wow, they didn't even do Cyclops that dirty. You know, yeah. so, <laughs> it's it's crazy. Please. You guys had uh, Kevin Eastman on the show. I did. That'd be cool. I'd like to check that one out. I love Kevin. Yeah, yeah. I had Kevin Eastman on, and um, th- there was a lot of fun. I got to ask him some questions, and um, I asked him about uh, like uh, what what the turtles would be listening to and what kind of music they were into. And he's like, "I never thought of that before." And you know, it's just, <laughs> you know, you, you try to get into the heads of the characters and all that. And and the other part of of this show is I'll do sort of the voice acting and and read through the the comics and all that. So I kind of like to get into the characters and think like, well, what's Leo like? What does Leo talk like? Cause I've, I've heard him talk in the movies and I've heard him talk in the cartoons, but you know, what does he sound like if I'm going to do it and uh, like Raph and stuff like that. So it was, I just got kind of meta with it in terms of that. So it was kind of fun. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. He's coming to uh, my, my town in September. We just found oh. out. We posted today. Oh, that's I was like, awesome. wow, you're going to the Memphis thing. Hey, I just, I just seen it. And I'm going to tell you, Kevin Eastman, I've met Kevin Eastman twice, and him and his wife are, I mean, they're just so kind and so generous, and they love their fans. They absolutely love their fans, you know, and like I said, I got to meet him twice. I know Justin's about to meet him this year, too, for the first time, and I want to tell you, yeah, and they're absolutely amazing people i mean I, I i have nothing i wouldn't i don't have anything bad to say about them you know i mean they're amazing people they're just so yeah. nice to their fandom and he travels with the family which makes it even cooler yeah. yes yeah yep. i'm super excited i can't wait uh he's definitely gonna if he hasn't seen my stands he's gonna get one all oh, <laughs> right yeah, he he takes like, hey, he buddy, takes don't shoot me but here you so go. What, what do you uh, no. what do you do? Do you give him the signature one and and on the back maybe like some of his artwork? Like what would you go with? Um, we were actually trying to figure out what to do on the backboard of the signature. Commandy, you got an idea? Commandy, you know from. Yeah, I, uh, oh, what were you gonna say, Eric? 
I was um, going to say, I mean, you could do the first issue. That's oh, yeah. always a good idea, too. Um, but my designer was like, he pulled out the, the old sketch, you know, the old man turtle. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, the, the uh, I think turtle? it's pretty famous. You've seen the old man turtle sketch that he does. It's it's hanging on Eric's wall, actually. Yeah. Yep. Oh, are you talking about the first turtle? Yeah. Yeah. Like the old yeah. man turtle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure where it came from, but uh, he pulled out. He's like, do you think that would work? And I was like, I think people would like that. I think that's a fun mm-hmm. one. It, if yeah, not, man, I, I know his favorite comic from way back was Jack, Jack Kirby's uh, Commandy. So from DC and all that. And that was like what got him into like wanting to do comics in the first place. So, you know, that that's another cool one. Or you look at that, uh, the thing that he's got, uh, he did an homage to, uh, it was the Turtles in Thor. So it was like Leonardo and Thor fighting, kind of like that. I, I picked up the t-shirt from from the uh, the Kevin Eastman fan club page. So that'd be a cool one too. So I wonder if anyone's drawn him as a turtle. Because oh, you know, in his, like, in his current years, with his head kind of shaping out, sort of looks like reminded me of Casey from <laughs> back in the day. He always reminded me of Casey with like the hair and stuff like that. So you know, yeah. I so like I said, we haven't decided, but he's you know a very photogenic guy too. So we might be able to pull off something. That's awesome. That's that's so cool that you're gonna do that. Like that's that just seems like that's gonna be a great interaction. Yeah, I mean, he's going to say it's a it's hit or miss sometimes with them when you're using their signature and you're selling their signature. Um, most of the artists don't care. They're just really happy to see you share the love. And the publishing companies like Boom Studios doesn't really have a big problem with me. I talked to the, the sales manager guy over there and he says, you know, the licensing isn't really worth it for Boom. They kick everyone out. Like Boom Studios is not like an easy contract to keep. And he said, if you're not printing paper or selling like clothing, I think was the other one, then they don't really care. That's awesome. I feel, I feel like if Boom doesn't care, then a lot of people probably don't really care in that perspective. Unless, as I said, you're like Clayton Crane and, you know, you have well, your signature is a thing. You know, like yeah, it's a staple in the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, I, I feel, I feel like a lot of them, like, yeah, I think, I think a lot of them are would like to have, like, like, hey, you know, like, you go to, like, to the artist and be like, hey, are you okay if I, you know, use your, use this and use your name? And a lot of them are just are so, so kind hearted and able to mm-hmm. be willing to be like yeah that's fine you know and and, yeah. that, and that shows a lot of respect because i've seen like uh this one guy from he does uh wood burning on covers the and, legal burning know, guy yes legal burning guy hey, yep I love that guy well and, i don't know, you know that well, but... <laughs> and he's always he's always give credit like uh my buddy's got quite a few of them that done by him you know he did some stuff that was from bartling and Mike Ruth and all that stuff. And, you know, he, mm-hmm. you know, paid respects to them for, for that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, a lot of them are, are, are really, really cool and laid back. I know like Mike Ruth, I'm really, really good, really, really close with him. Really good friend. Amazing artist. I don't know if you, the, the book I just showed you right here, this one. Oh Yeah. To nine point nine two, by the or way. Uh, or maybe uh, Swamp Thing, or or I yes, mean, and any of those guys from uh, Things Are Getting Sketchy, you know, like, yeah. Shout out to Stefan yeah. and and all them, but uh, yeah, any of those. I mean, that, you think about how honestly, I've had great way. luck with uh, reaching out to most of them and having you know great conversations. Mm-hmm. Unless they're super famous people like Kevin Eastman, you're never gonna have a conversation with them very easily. You know, <laughs> what do you mean? You can't get a hold of Jim Lee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, hold on, Jim. Let me tell you about my Superman stance. All right, <laughs> he's gonna be like, "Huh? Who are you?" You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, you could always so, you could always say too, like when it comes to like copyright and stuff like that, your work has to be transformative, and this yeah. this is transformative. It's literally taking something that's a two dimensional item and transforming it into something that is lifelike, three D, for the purpose of displaying, you know, the original work. So, to, to and we're me, still I mean, kind of in like a homemade oh. good kind of section here, yep. you know, because we're we're just really on Etsy. We're not really, you know, like a big Hasbro company over here making stands yet. Yet, all right, might I add that? But um, 
I like yes, that you uh, said that, and you have like a GI Joe themed T shirt on. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. Toys, okay. Nice. Nano One's here in Memphis, so uh, this is our local my local comic book store. Oh, awesome! Yeah, Nano One Toys, Nano One Comics, Nano One Games. He's got four or five locations. That's pretty good here. Yeah, yeah. So All right, guys, but I'm losing battery. I'm at two percent. I'm going to let you know right now. I'm going to die. Okay, no worries. Um, we want to thank you for uh, coming on, and uh, mm -hmm. with, with that, we'll we'll end the live stream and uh, thank everybody for uh, coming in. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for having me, guys. It was wonderful. Thanks for, you know, promoting the stands. And, you know, thanks for all the nice things you said about the one you had. Oh, yeah, definitely no problem. I, I love it. So, uh, you know, um, any folks that want to reach out to you, we've got Stand It Up Comics on Etsy, uh, at Stand It Up Comics on Instagram. And uh, is they can get a hold of you pretty easily by sending a message. Yeah, most of the time. I, I'm quick on responding, you know, usually in the first day. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll say so. Right, and, and with that, folks, uh, thanks for listening in to the live stream and all that, and we will catch you next time. Epic Tales from the Sewers. It's pizza time. And now, in a segment that we call Pizza Time, where we discuss any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or pizza-related food, I give you Pizza Time. Hi, everybody, and today, your recipe is going to be pizza pot stickers. Those, those handheld items that you can have while you're fighting off the insect forces of Maligna, or maybe where you're traipsing through the jungle, right, looking for a jaguar. Pizza pot stickers. This makes about 50 dumplings. A rad mashup of Splinter's Asian heritage and his son's love of pizza, these dumplings make the perfect snack for any party. They do take practice, however, so don't bug out after a few wrappers on your first try. Ingredients. One large, two medium garlic cloves, pressed or minced. 1 quarter cup minced yellow or white onion, 1 link or 1 quarter pound of sweet Italian sausage casing removed, 1 half cup of finely chopped pepperoni, about 1 and a half ounces, half cup shredded low moisture mozzarella cheese, 1 teaspoon Italian seasoning blend, 1 eighth teaspoon salt, 1 eighth teaspoon freshly ground black pepper, 1 package wonton wrappers, preferably circular, two tablespoons vegetable oil, plus more as needed, one cup no-cook tomato sauce or store-bought marinara for dipping. Instructions. Combine the garlic, onion, sausage, pepperoni, mozzarella, Italian seasoning, salt, and pepper in a medium bowl and mix with your hands until everything is incorporated. Step two. Set up your workstation. Fill a small bowl with water, lay out a bunch of the wonton wrappers, place a rimmed baking sheet nearby. Step three. Scoop one teaspoon of filling into the center of the wrapper. Dip your finger into the water, then use it to moisten the outside edge of the wonton wrapper. Bring both sides of the wonton wrapper up and press them together around the filling. Pleat the wrapper and give it a good seal. Step 4. Place the finished pot sticker on the baking sheet, pleated side up. Repeat with the remaining wonton wrappers and filling. Step 5. Heat a large saucepan or Dutch oven over medium heat. Add two tablespoons of vegetable oil and swirl to coat the bottom of the pan. When the oil begins to simmer but not smoke, place the pot stickers carefully in the pan. Pleat the sides up, placing them a bit apart. You'll probably have to cook the pot stickers in batches. Step 6. Cook uncovered for 3 to 5 minutes or until the pot stickers are browned on the bottom. Then pour in 1 fourth cup of water and immediately cover the pan. Step 7. Let the pot stickers steam for 2 minutes. Then... Lift the lid and check them for doneness. The filling should feel firm. If you're not sure whether or not they're done, cut one open and check the filling to make sure it's cooked inside. Step 8. When the pot stickers are done steaming, remove the lid and cook for two more minutes or until all the water has evaporated. Remove the pot stickers from the pan, add two more tablespoons of oil, then repeat with the remaining uncooked pot stickers. Serve hot with pizza sauce for dipping. Lighten up, dudes. You can use turkey or vegan sausage or low-fat cheese and skip the pepperoni. That is your recipe for today. Pizza pot stickers. Cowabunga, dudes! Thank you for listening to the Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. This podcast has no affiliation with Eastman, Laird, Mirage Studios, IDW Studios, Archie Comics, or Nickelodeon Studios. This podcast is a member of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Check out thedorkening.com for other podcasts. 
Epic Tales from the Sewers is recorded by Justin Cooper and Eric Will. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds Coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Greetings and Shabibans! We are the Retro Reductibus Cephala Podcast, a long form bi weekly show that celebrates all the things that made growing up awesome. Yeah, that sounds good, but I don't know what all those words mean. I think what Parasite seems trying to say is that on Retro Reductibus, we explore a range of retro goodness from toys, video games, and movies to cartoons and even snacks and school lunches. Oh. And we do it all with a positive spin, a slew of killer guests, and some ahem, very adult language. And you know what else is cool? No. This crazy show is part of the Dorking Podcast Network with new episodes every technical Tuesday. What's that? And if waiting two weeks for a new episode gives you a sad, know that we drop bonus episodes all the time, like the off-format Crow's Nest and an interview series we call The Brick. You can listen to Retro Octopus on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or any app that's cool enough to carry the only show that celebrates all the things that make growing up awesome. Do you like gaming? You know, this game would be better if it was a battle royale. Do you like technology? I bet this tech would work better if it was a battle royale. Do you like movies, TV shows, and everything else that me and Nate can't agree on? The Last Jedi was easily the best Star Wars film I have ever seen. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Everybody in this room is stupid now because of you. Talking Gaming and Tech is a bi-weekly podcast where we cover the latest and greatest in gaming and tech. Now part of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Talking Gaming and Tech is a podcast produced by Tech Prime Media. You can find us on YouTube and all their social media platforms. You can find Talking Gaming and Tech on Apple Podcasts or wherever else you get your podcasts from. This podcast is filmed live. If you want to check us out while we're filming live, remember to follow links on social media and your comment might be read on air. It took me 10 years to make the perfect man cave. And then we took it over. And we made it into the multiversal chamber. Then I started my own podcast. And we took that over too. And we're the co-host, the Multiverse Kids. Yeah, and I'm the dad, the geeky dad. And every week, we what? We review the movies, shows, and books. Games and toys. Yeah, and sometimes we even have a special guest. So, join us every week on the Geeky Dad Podcast.